friends in Tampa. <laughs> so you came from St. Pete and it took you a while. <laughs> yes, sir, it did. All right. Um, so why don't you tell our listeners um, what you have? So you're opposing this this proposed event zone. Why? What are some of the restrictions that will be placed on St. Petersburg residents and visitors during the uh, convention? Well, I think it's fair at this point to um, to characterize this event zone ordinance, the entire event zone ordinance, as a form of martial law. Now, I understand this is a national, it's been declared by the Secret Service as a national special security event. Okay, fine. You know, I, I have sympathy with law enforcement. Um, I'm a member of a security patrol myself, a neighborhood watch. I uh, worked security for Continental Airlines back in the 80s, uh, guarding uh, aircraft, commercial aircraft at, at uh, Saint, or Minneapolis International Airport. So I understand these issues from uh, a, a security point of view and from the point of view of law enforcement. But that has to be balanced with the rights of the citizens. And the rights of the citizens are paramount. You know, we've had 200 years of history of this country having to uh, defend our country against uh, enemies foreign and domestic. And it's a cliche to say that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, but I think it applies exactly in this case. We have to be very vigilant. And here we've got a form of martial law that's being imposed mod uh, by the St. Pete City Council um, that's modeled on an ordinance from Tampa um, that you know is just way overbroad, and it lasts for way too long. And it, it's, it's just way too much. And I think anybody that reads this ordinance uh, would be against it. A lot of business owners are. A lot of individuals are. A lot of people in St. Petersburg are. I am for a number of, of very important reasons. I just uh, um, saw a tree trimming crew, a private company, this morning uh, in uh, St. Petersburg. And I stopped and uh, they were working in the neighborhood uh, where I'm a, a resident right now. And they were uh, outside, and I, I stopped and talked to them, and I said, are you aware of Section 10 of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, event zone ordinance? And they said, no. And I told them what was in the ordinance. The ordinance is going to prevent people uh, from um, rappelling and climbing in the entire city of St. Petersburg for you know, the entire uh, time that the event zone is in effect, which is six days, August 26th to August 31st. So you can't legally trim a tree in St. Petersburg in the entire city for six days. Nobody's talking about this. Well, let me ask you two things about that. One is probably the reason that they have that in there, the city leaders would say, is so that you can't have these actions like you hear of Greenpeace people doing banner drops off of, um, you know, tall buildings and so forth. So that's probably the rationale for why they have that in there. The other thing that I've heard is that that people in Tampa and I assume people in St. Petersburg, the officials say, look, we'll enforce this, we'll use wisdom and we'll, we'll, we'll selectively enforce this. So we want to put it in there, um, but we, if it's a tree trimming that's doing legitimate repelling, that they wouldn't even bother them. What are your thoughts about those two things? Well, that's not how the ordinance reads, okay? The ordinance is the language of the ordinance. It's not what somebody intends it to do. It not, it's not what somebody may selectively enforce it to do. We may trust or not trust city officials, including law enforcement, to do at their discretion. The ordinance is what the ordinance is. Now, that isn't what the ordinance says. It also uh, uh, prevents people from using any kind of aids to climbing. So you can't put a ladder on the side of a building to paint a wall in St. Petersburg for six days. This is crazy. This is an absolute abrogation of city civil liberties. It's a disruption of normal business. Why would this need to be in effect? I mean, this has nothing to do with protecting a one-day evening event at Tropicana Field on Sunday, August 26th. Yeah, so that brings up maybe one of your main concerns as far as what I've been able to tell about this ordinance is that it lasts for so long. There's this one event in at, at the Trop Sunday, the 26th, and it's you know several hours, and after that, there's no real official events. Um, I think what I've heard from some of the people that are protesting this is why does it have to be so long? Why does it have to last all week? That's exactly correct. I mean, why is it six days when there's a one-day event in St. Petersburg on a Sunday? 
let's let's give our listeners an idea of the geographic scale of the event zone. I think that it, when leading up to the Tampa event zone, we noticed that it got smaller from what it was originally proposed. Uh, Council Member Reddick was one of the people who suggested that it be brought below south of uh, I-4 instead of extending all the way up to Columbus. What's the, I, I, my understanding is that the St. Pete ev proposed event zone is even larger than Tampa's, is that right? Or is it, a, what, where does it go from which streets to, to which well, streets? Well, they're both large uh, and they're, in my opinion, just way too big. Um, the uh, memorandum that we got uh, from Mark Wynn, who is the uh, uh, chief assistant city attorney in the city of St. Petersburg, and I'll just read from the letter that he sent to the city council. The ordinance establishes an event zone which is roughly from 5th Avenue North to 7th Avenue South. Now that's a 12 block span. Seven blocks south, five blocks north of Central Avenue. And from 22nd Street, which is over by Dropicana Field, to the bay, to Tampa Bay. That is miles away from Tropicana Field, okay? And then it goes on to say, in which certain items can be prohibited during the days of the RNC events, August 26th to August 30th, 2012. I mean, a one-day event is going to uh, result in this ordinance, and if it's enforced the way it's written, it's going to disrupt normal business for six days for a one-day event in that zone, and then not only in the event zone, but like Section 10 that I've been citing in terms of, of people being prevented from uh, putting up ladders on, on uh, walls and, and painting buildings and tree trimming and the like, that's a citywide ordinance. It has nothing to do with the event zone or the parade route or the supposed public viewing area. This is a citywide ordinance for six days. All right, Mark Skogman from the St. Pete RNC Coalition. Let's hear what our listeners think. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. And Terry in St. Pete, you're on the air. want to prevent are already against law. That's correct. Assault, trespass, vandalism. There are already existing laws that they can arrest people who try to do those things. I just don't see a reason why they have to pass this overly broad ordinance for, um, that prohibits everything from umbrellas to water bottles to tree trimming and turns every citizen of St. Pete into a potential criminal. It's simply not necessary. And you talk about, well, they're not going to arrest Well, yes, and th that's exactly why the uh, St. Pete RNC Coalition has decided to hold their own event and have their own say in public so they can have a, a public forum to speak on this since we're not going to be able to do it at the City Council. We're uh, calling a uh, press conference at 2 p.m. tomorrow on the uh, steps of City Hall in St. Petersburg exactly for that. And we'll be there before and after to speak to the public and speak to the media about what we're doing and why we're doing this. I'll be there reading a statement from the coalition and we're inviting any other organization that is concerned about this uh, in a similar way uh, to uh, prepare a, a 60 or 90 second statement and come to the press conference and represent your organization and read your own statement as well. Please limit it to about 60 to 90 seconds uh, just for practical purposes. But uh, feel free to participate. There are other organizations out there other than just the uh, St. Peter RNC Coalition uh, uh, who are uh, concerned about this. You're listening to Last Call. This is that you just heard the voice of Mark Skogman from the St. Pete RNC Coalition. I'm Sean Canan, your host every Wednesday. 813-239-9663 is the number to call. You can email us at dj at wmnf.org. David in Tampa, you're on the air. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Yes, yeah, so there is. Yeah, there, there definitely so. is. Uh, the Pinellas Trail, which uh, carries a lot of traffic during the day, foot traffic and uh, bicycle traffic, um, is going to be shut down uh, on Sunday, I believe. I believe that starts actually sometime possibly on Saturday, but it's definitely shut down on Sunday. And it's my understanding that I-275, the freeway right through uh, the middle of Pinellas County, is also going to be shut down I for a period of time as I well. I think it's 175, which is the southernmost of the two um, okay, yeah, bands. 175. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Thank, thank you for correcting me. That's the one that goes right next to Tropicana you know, Field. Which is, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty serious thing. That That's a that's a main thoroughfare. It's a main spur into downtown St. Petersburg. That's going to be a major inconvenience. Now, you know, I have uh, sympathy with law enforcement because I, I tell you, when you look at the geography of the Tampa Bay area, um, honestly, and, and with all due respect to all the businesses here that want to earn a profit from a business from this convention, this is, from a security point of view, is a nightmare area for a convention. You've got the port, you've got these rivers, uh, you've got all these freeways. I mean, it is a difficult place from a security point of view to hold a convention. And uh, uh, I wouldn't want the job of providing security for these conventions. I really uh, sympathize and have pity uh, for law enforcement officials in their performance of the duties there for this, that's for sure. Let's go to another caller. We have a caller named George in Pinellas County, and he says he's a government official. George, what do you do? That's true. There are most of the security money is being spent on personnel uh, hiring outside temporarily hiring outside law enforcement officers. That yeah, yeah. There's there's. Mark, what's your response to that? Well, yeah, I mean, there are already laws in place that that protect the public from all the things that uh, that are, 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 are of a concern. And we've got the Secret Service here. We've got who knows who else. We've got, you know, the, the, the county police departments. We've got the city police departments. We've got all the backup that they can, uh, you know, that they can muster. I'm sure there'll be federal marshals here in some capacity as well. And I do have sympathy for law enforcement, and they're going to be... Uh, heavily present in the area. They're going to have all this uh, military-style equipment. I mean, there was even a request for drones at one point, and I believe that's been canceled. They've got all these security cameras, and yeah, there is a positive side to that. But um, uh, I'd like to just address a couple other points in terms of this ordinance. I'm looking at this uh, subsection C here. Of, I believe it's section 5, prohibitive items in the public viewing area and parade route. Um, this ordinance, this section of the ordinance, or subsection, uh, prohibits tripods. Well, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm working on a, on a film right now about the RNC and what's happening in, in St. Petersburg and, and, and Tampa and uh, other political issues. And I'm prohibited from using a tripod during the parade. Now, often I do still photography and I do video photography at the same time. Now, you can only do that if you've got a tripod to put a video camera on it and monitor it, and then it leaves your hands free to do still photography with a camera. If I can't use a tripod, that severely restricts what I'm able to do as media. Now, I thought this was a media-friendly event. Also, there was other prohibitions where in the event zone, um, and let me see if I can scroll down to it, um, it has a prohibition on uh, various types of wire. Now, I'm also a sound man. I'm going to be running uh, a sound system uh, right across the field from, uh, 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 from Tropicana Field on that Sunday. And... 
according to my reading of the uh, of the event zone, it's illegal for me to use uh, wire to connect to my speakers for my sound system unless I get written permission from the property owner or the tenant where the event is going to have to happen. Now, where are conservatives on this issue? I thought conservatives were against big government solutions and uh, overregulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, and I do know some conservatives that have... Uh, have concerns about this, but we need more conservatives to get involved in this. Let's go back to the phones. Thank you so much for that call, George, and we appreciate that perspective. Let's hear now from Leonard in St. Pete. Hi, Leonard. Yeah, and that's not the way the law is supposed to work in the United States. Well, I know there's, there are missiles on the top of the White House, and I believe they're controlled by the Secret Service, but I'm not an expert on that. But, uh, you know, there are legitimate reasons for having, uh, you know, service-to-air missiles. Uh, if you consider what happened in 9-11 and you believe the official story, um, there is a legitimate, uh, you know, concern there. And also, I don't object to having uh, 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 the police snipers or SWAT team snipers in the area. Uh, you know, with 50 caliber sniper rifles in case somebody does pop up. That's a legitimate security concern. And, and I, you know, I do see that from a security uh, perspective. But to get, uh, you know, to abrogate civil liberties uh, in this kind of a manner, which is just way overbroad, I mean, this needs to be challenged by the public. I mean, you can have a, a literally in the event zone during the, uh, uh, during the parade, et cetera, you can be arrested for having a light bulb in your hand. You can be arrested for having a vase a rope, a chain, a cable, and, and like I mentioned before, wire. Well, that would include speaker wires for sound systems, wouldn't it? Or uh, microphone cables. Or I'm speaking through a microphone right now. The cable that's, uh, that's connecting the microphone that uh, is, is connected to the radio station right now, that would be illegal in St. Petersburg. Thank you for that call, Leonard. We'll go back to the phone lines. We have someone who's not in St. Pete or Tampa. We have Tim from Lake Wales. Hi, Tim. What's on your mind? Yeah, so I heard something about that. They're just stranding people and getting people used to having streets shut down and waterways shut down and military law imposed. That's what part of this is all about, training people to get used to it. I agree with that, sir. And that's why I've taken to calling this a form of martial law, because I think, in fact, uh, it can be legitimately described as such. And I want to thank you, uh, thank uh, Sean for having me on the last call today to talk about these important issues. It's, it's always a pleasure to be here at WMNF. Go WMNF! Yes, you rock! Well, thanks for joining us today, Mark Skogman. And thank you for that call, Tim, from Lake Wales. It's good to hear from someone who isn't exact in, in Tampa or St. Pete. I know a lot of the people in Tampa and a lot of the people in St. Pete have opinions, but it's good to hear from people around our listening area. Um, thanks for joining me, Mark. It's my pleasure. Mark is with Mark Skogman is with the St. Pete RNC Co Coalition. They're going to be having a press conference tomorrow at the uh, 